Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I will hopefully be reading in July. Baby, baby. So yes, this is my TBR video for July and yeah, I'm just going to talk about all the books that I will hopefully be reading this month or this upcoming month. This TBR list is quite long because uh, summer school ends on July 5th which is a couple days away, and I will be free to do nothing but read for a whole month. And I am so excited. So that's all I'm gonna be doing. Expect a bunch of videos. If you didn't know, I actually do weekly reading vlogs. I vlog every single week of my life, and I talk about every single book that I read in depth for minutes long, way longer than I would in a wrap up in those weekly reading vlogs. So if you want to watch weekly reading vlogs, be sure to click the join button on my homepage to become a member of my channel. Speaking of members of my channel, one of the perks that members have is picking a book for me every single month to read. So I posted a post on my community page for my members asking them to give me any Kindle Unlimited recommendations. So from the books that they recommended me, I put them on a spinner wheel and I'm about to spin it for you and whichever book that I um, land on I will be reading in July and again you're gonna want to watch those weekly reading vlogs to know my in-depth thoughts about this book so we're just gonna do with the trusty iPad here probably can't tell but it is my iPad is completely shattered it is that's why you're not seeing it a lot in Instagram posts and book talk posts you know uh, because I, I dropped it a couple times. Anyway, okay, let's spin here. We're gonna... I didn't know made a sound. <laughs> what is it? Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. It is Broken Vow by Sophie Lark. Hi, everybody. It's actually editing Avery here. So I found out that Broken Vow is actually number five in the Brutal Birthright series. And so I'm actually going to start with book one instead. That one is Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. So that's the book that I'm going to be reading as my Kindle Unlimited pick. I know it's not the specific book that one of my channel members recommended to me, but they recommended me the fifth book in the series and I really like to read books in order. So I will work my way up to book number five eventually. So I'm actually going to be reading Brutal Prince. And this was recommended by Mommy's Reading. So thank you so, so much. Um, I have heard a lot of things about this book, specifically from my lovely, lovely friends who hosted the Mafia Romance Readathon. Follow her on TikTok. She's hilarious with her husband on there. I really recommend following her on TikTok. Um, but I haven't read any of her books yet and I've been meaning to. So I feel like this is like a great opportunity. But all I know about this book is that it is a Mafia Romance and I believe the first one is Enemies to Lovers, if I'm mistaken, plus Arranged Marriage. I might be confusing it with a different book in the series, but um, yeah, everyone's loving this series, so I'm really excited. So thank you so, so much for recommending me this book. I will for sure talk about my thoughts in depth in my weekly reading vlogs when those come out. Now, normally would be the time where I pick a book out of a TBR jar or a TBR random generator that I did last month, um, but I'm not gonna do that this month just because I'm a little backed up in the books that I have picked out of TBR jars. Um, so I thought that Ju July, sorry, July would be the best time to get caught up on those. So April's pick was Upside Down by Leah Riley. I ended up starting this book, if you can tell. This is a reread for me, by the way. Um, I started reading it. I got like this far the way. The other book just fell. I started reading this book um, like a month ago. I started reading it. But then summer school hit and I have not read a physical book. The book fell again. <laughs> Stay. Goodness. So I have not read a physical book in the whole month of June because summer school was the whole month of June and it has taken over my life. Like I do nothing but school all day long. Um, and so I was not able to read any more of this. So I really want to devote some time in July to finally finishing this book and getting out the vlog for you and hopefully continuing on with the rest of the books in the series. This is a contemporary romance series that I've read, read like four or five years ago. I remember nothing about it except for the fact that our heroine is studying abroad in Australia and she ends up meeting a surfer dude and it is a romance between the two of them. The book that I picked last month in June is Lord of the Fading Lands by C.L. Wilson, which is a book that I definitely still want to read. 
It sucks that I can't find an audio on my library, but I feel like July is gonna be the month for me physically reading books, y'all. I just feel it because I haven't read one in quite a long time. So I feel like I could possibly fight through this. All I know about this one is that it deals with Faye and it is a fantasy romance. I have loved C.L. Wilson's books in the past that I've read, like adored them. And I'm really excited for this. I know some of my friends have recently read this and many of my friends recommend me this book. So I'm dying to read it. So I'm gonna get all of the books that I own physically out of the way first. Another book that I was in the middle of before summer school started was this book, which is A Fate of a Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. I'm actually, I was this far the way through it. I was adoring this book, but I had to put it on pause because I'm not reading physically at the moment. So if you didn't know, this is like K.A. Tucker's like first, I think full on fantasy publication. Um, I think this was actually her first written novel ever but then they like stopped publishing it and then she i think reworked it again and so this is like the republication of it in the way that she wanted if that makes sense i think that's what i wrote read in the beginning of the book it's been a month since i picked this up i feel like this book has so many different elements to it it reminds me of so many things it reminds me of daughter of smoke and bone for some reason they the 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 magic in here really reminds me of Daughter of Smoke and Bone. It also reminds me of, of A Curse So Dark and Lonely because our heroine in here may or may not get sucked into a fantasy land when she lives like on earth in a regular day and time like us. And it deals with a lot of uh, fantasy um, royalty, which is very interesting. Um, I was so sucked into this book. I'm s I want to read it, but again, I don't have time at the moment. I have to wait till July. So this is when I'm going to pick it back up. Um, hopefully I don't have to reread it because I don't really want to reread this much. And this is going to be probably the thickest book that I physically read all year long, which is quite daunting to me, I feel like. Um, but Valentine PR sent this to me. Thank you so much to Valentine PR for sending this my way. They actually also sent me an e-art copy um, a couple days before I got this, but unfortunately that was sent to me whenever I had a really, really, really bad flare up with my chronic illness where it forced me to have a fever. So I was sick with a fever for a couple of days and I, whenever I am sick or have a flare up, I cannot read for the life of me. I can, the only form of reading I can do is listening to an audiobook and that is it. No way will you find me reading a book while I have a flare up at all. I wasn't able to read it before release date, which sucks, but I am so ready to continue this in July because this was so good of what I was reading of it. I'm trying to read all of Grace Draven's backlist by the end of the year. And so I thought this would be the perfect time to finally pick up Phoenix Unbound. I know that so many people love this book. This is a fantasy romance book. I love Grace Draven so stinking much and I don't know why I haven't picked this one up yet. Um, I have the audiobook on Libby and the sequel on Libby, like the audio version of it. I don't own the sequel in a physical form, but um, I am just so excited to read this book. Um, it deals with witches, I think, and magic. That's all I really know. I love to go into her books completely blind because she just like, she, makes it for me like her books are everything to me like they're everything i don't need to know the plot i don't need to know the summary i just need to dive in and i'll love it so i'm really excited to dive into this one i then thought it would be really fun to maybe pick up some mass market paperbacks and get some physical reading in so i thought a really fun short read that i could read is her texas cowboy by jill lynn i believe this is a harlequin romance right probably it's a love inspired i don't know sarah <laughs> Tell me, tell me, what, tell me if this is a Harlequin or not. Um, oh wait, no, this isn't on the back. I'm dumb. Um, so I picked this up one up quite a while ago, mainly because it is a Harlequin book and it has Texas in the title because I'm from Texas. I don't read a lot of books that are set in Texas. And the last Harlequin book that I read was the first Harlequin book that I've ever read ever. And it was the hugest disappointment. It was not good to me. And so I'm hoping this is better. Look. The cute couple, the dog. I think it may, there's maybe a farm in here. That sounds really cute. Our heroine moves back to a small town in Texas. She's trying to avoid her ex, but easier said than done. Apparently she broke Hunter's heart years ago and they're trying to be friends. But how do you forge just a friendship with someone you've always pictured as your bride? So I feel like this could be like a easy, easy book that I could like fly through in July that I'm really excited to read. The last physical book that I will hopefully be reading is one that I'm super excited for. Um, we have The Lily and the Sword by Sarah Bennett. Just look at this cover. Look at it in all of its glory. It is glorious. It is beautiful. I love this cover. 
I don't know a lot about this historical. I think this is a romance book where the hero ends up kidnapping the heroine and then they fall in love. I think that's what it is. I'm not sure. I don't know. I think she gets married to him or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But the cover is really what intrigued me. And if this historical romance doesn't work out for me in July, I have many more in that box back there. So we're going to be talking about the books that I don't physically own on me next. Um, we have a couple repeats like two repeats from last month. I do have books that I did not get to in June, so I, I may get to them, but they're not necessarily high on my priority list, so I'm not gonna be talking about them. One that is definitely on my priority list is Buffy the Vampire Slayer Omnibus Volume Number One by a bunch of different authors. Um, if you didn't know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite show of all time. I love it. So I'm trying to read all of the graphic novels and everything that is set in the Buffy verse. And I believe the Omnibus tales like take place before she comes to Sunnydale and while she's in Sunnydale, like takes place at the same times as the show, which will be very interesting for me. My uh, library has all of them on ebook form. So that's how I'm going to be reading them. Uh, if you didn't know about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, she is the chosen one, one girl in all of the world tasked to slay the demons and the vampires. And oh, it was the original Vampire Diaries before the Vampire Diaries was a thing, you guys. Like, watch it watch it if you have not it is on amazon prime get to it <laughs> i then want to read neon gods by katie robert y'all i got an arc of this right before summer school started right i could not read it i could not y'all i could not for the life of me read it this is katie robert's newest release i really want to get it in physical form because it just looks beautiful and i've heard nothing but amazing things this is a hades and persephone retelling that's all i know about it i love the fan art and the illustrations that come with the book oh my gosh i love them they're beautiful i've just heard amazing things about this book in general and i'm super excited i'm super excited we then have a book that i currently have um on hold or it will come in a couple days through Libby, which is A Sweet Filthy Morning After by Christina Lauren. Um, this is a short novella, a part of the Sweet Wild Seasons, sorry, Wild Seasons series. The first book is called Sweet Filthy Boy. Um, and I believe this is like a little novella. So the one sentence summary of this book is, this audio exclusive short tells the events from Sweet Filthy Boy from a new perspective. It's only 30 minutes long, so I'm gonna fly through it obviously in like a sitting. Um, but yeah, I haven't heard anybody talk about this book. I didn't know that there was a novella until I looked the series up on Libby and then it told me. So yeah, I might also read book number three, but we'll see. I don't know, it's not on my priority right now. <laughs> then we have the next book in the Spindle Cove series that I need to get to, which is Lord Dashwood Missed Out, which is book number 4.5. This is a novella part of the series. Um, I think it has to do with a heroine who has become like a famous writer because she wrote about her like long lost love, uh, Lord Dashwood, and then it becomes popular within like the ladies in society. And so she travels to Spindle Cove, I think, to like read about her article or to do like a, a reading of her paper. Um, and then Lord Dashwood ends up actually being there. It sounds very interesting. I am trying to read all of Tessadere's backlist by the end of the year. So that's my reason why I want to get to this one. I forgot I also own this one physically. I really want to finally read Only When It's Us by Chloe Lise. I have the audiobook and from Libby, um, I can borrow it at any time. And this is a romance book that I'm really excited for. This takes place in college. Our heroine is a soccer player. And I believe um, she asked the professor for um, notes for a lecture she missed because she was doing something with soccer. And she tells her, he tells her to go ask the guy. I think that sits next to her. And I think he is deaf, if I'm not mistaken. And um, they both like don't start off on the right foot with one another. Like they don't really like one another at the beginning. Um, so I think it might be a dislike, hate to love here. They obviously fall for one another because it is a romance. So I really want to get into the series. Everyone loves the series and I feel like it's chocked full of diverse representation. And so I am very much looking forward to finally diving into this one. And next we have a Ruby Dixon book. I am back in the game of trying to read all of her backlist by the end of the year. I'm trying to make my way through the Rizdiverse series. Um, so next we have book number four in the Rizdiverse series, which is When She Belongs. A bunch of people say that this is their favorite book in the series. However, it is 468 pages long. And that's like getting close to one of her, um, <laughs> like uh 
aspect and anchor series and like those are like 600 plus pages y'all and those were a trek to get through i loved them but i also had them on audio to help me get through them this one i do not have an audio form so i may cave and maybe get audible for another month just to listen to this um but we'll see i don't even know if it's if it is on audible but whatever so this is the next book in her Risdiverse series i don't know anything about it i'm not gonna know anything about it each book in this series takes place on a planet called uh rista 3 filled with a bunch of human and alien outcasts and a bunch of human women they own farms and in order to keep their farms they're trying to find husbands to help them like protect their farm so other people don't steal it from them um and so a bunch of the books in the series is about these women trying to find husbands i just heard a bunch of people love this one in the series so again really looking forward to this one on the topic of ruby dixon i am going to try to read shift out of luck which is the first book in the bear bites series i own the not own i have rented out the bind up of all five books through kindle unlimited i think all of the books in the series are novella length under 100 pages or just about 100 pages and these are all shifter romances i also think they're all bear shifters i haven't heard anybody talk about this series by ruby dixon and what their thoughts are about it so i'm looking forward to learning what my thoughts are gonna be then we have two books that i plan to read because i read book one in uh june that i loved if you would have watched my weekly reading vlogs i loved this book it was so good um the first book in the series is the fake king's curse which i've heard many of my friends talk about so i finally dove in and read it and so i plan on reading the prequel to the series which is between dawn and dusk i've i have a physical copy coming in the mail um so that is coming to me very soon so that's how i'm going to be reading that one um and this Prequel is just about the hero's parents who are from book one. They are a king and queen, so you get to read about their romance. And then I plan on reading book number two, which is The Fae King's Dream. So if you didn't know about this series, though, um, this series in the first book, it was about our heroine and hero. Um, they met when they were really, really young. And um, our hero is actually a fae prince at the beginning of the first book the thing is though he actually lives in a fey land and he ended up meeting this little 12 year old girl from earth who lives on earth because he entered a portal to her land and this portal only um opens up once a year but in her time that is just one day so one year on this fey land equals one day on earth um and so he grows up so fast right in front of her eyes every single day and she just grows up at our normal time you know um, and so by the time she's 18, he's like 600 years old. Um, <laughs> and uh, she comes up to tell him that she's really upset, but she has to leave because she's going off to college. Our hero gets really upset about this because they've become like great friends. They, like nothing romantic has happened before that point. And so he like ends up taking her through the portal to come be with him. It's really cool. I really liked it. And book number two is about the hero's cousin, if I'm not mistaken, or best friend whichever one could be possibly both but um these fey people have magical powers and so the guy from book one i think he had like nature and weather powers and this guy from book two he has dream powers so he can jump into people's dreams also i forgot to tell you these fey princes and kings that are in this land have all been cursed by witches to be blind um and they cannot see like actually see things in front of them until they meet their mate um and they consummate their relationship with their mate um, but but if you kiss somebody that is not your mate like if your first kiss is not with your mate like you will be blind forever no matter if you meet your mate later on in life like you will still be blind so yeah our hero he is a dream jumper so he can jump into other people's dreams and he ends up jumping into our heroine's dream of book two and she is actually in a coma and he ends up waking her up it sounds really interesting and i'm looking forward to diving into it oh my gosh the next two are both on kindle limited they are books that i currently have checked out on kindle limited and i am I wanted to I, I want to read so badly okay first is a, a lady of rook's grave manor by um catherine moon everyone and their mother has been talking about this book and i want to read it so badly all i know about it is that it's about our heroine who ends up um hooking up with this guy and he's kind of like dr jekyll and mr hyde he has like two different personalities one of which may be like monster-esque and he introduces her to a world full of monsters and um getting with some monsters 
and so I don't know that sounded really good to me and I, I really want to read it and lastly I have Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese I talked about this book in the 10 books that I want to read that are on Kindle Unlimited this is about our hero who has a stutter and he is a TA and a college class and he ends up meeting one of the students he's a TA for named Addison and she ends up bringing the hero out of his comfort zone um, cause he's pretty shy and reserved. She ends up bringing him out of his shell and he claims that he's never been more alive than when he's with her. And so it's a romance between the two of them and it just sounds so stinking good and I need to read it already. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I will hopefully be getting to in July. I plan on reading many more, but those are the ones that are at the top of my TBR at the moment. Please let me know down below if you are reading any of these books, if you've read any of these books, if you want to buddy read any of these books with me. I don't know, maybe my channel members, if y'all want to read um, Broken Vow with me, let me know. Um, maybe we can do that and we t can talk about it all together. Again, if you want to watch my weekly reading vlogs or be included in possibly next month's spinner wheel, be sure to click the join button down there uh, to join my channel. But yeah, anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.